Roddy, over the past three decades, you've managed a portfolio of successful restaurants between South Africa and Cyprus, continuously evolving your art into providing a memorable experience for your guests. Take us back to the beginning of your food journey. How did it all start? As a kid, I decided that I needed financial independence, as one does at the age of 13. Uh, and I got myself a job as a busboy in a restaurant in the, in, in, uh, the tiny little mining town that I grew up in, in Krugerstorp. And, um, the rest is history, as they say. I bought my first restaurant at the age of 21. So that was a 10 year success story, and then, uh, which you've been to. Uh, my second restaurant, again, I bought on a whim, and that was on the high streets of Johannesburg. Uh, that from day one was a, it was a success. I must state at the moment that I often get referred to as a chef. Okay, and I'm not. My experience in the food industry is hands-on experience. And that's why I refer to myself as a restaurateur. Uh, rather than a chef and and I don't say that in a derogatory way I say it in the most respectful way to a qualified chef despite what my restaurants names have been throughout the years people ought generally automatically used to say or do say let's go to Rodi's and and that's where this concept has evolved from, which again, we'll get into later. You've had the privilege of leading a varied and colorful life. What inspired you to start stirring up the culinary scene in Cyprus? When we moved here, it was, I was going into completely uncharted territory. I came here with a copy of my grandfather's passport. And I will forever be grateful that, that, that Cyprus said to me, Carlos Irtes Yemo. Welcome home, my, my son. Had I opened a restaurant anywhere else and not somewhere as cosmopolitan as Lemesso, I don't know whether the, its instant success would have been what it was. Because what I decided to do here was go parts of the menu, traditional, our Lukanika, our Basturmades, the one, the next thing. Uh, I would have a Greek salad on the menu as well as my salad with fresh figs and, and honey mustards and, and all sorts of things, etc. But what happened is that I eventually saw that the guests that were coming were going for the, the unusual things. And that's where I decided that I was going to go completely in the opposite direction because me cooking Greek food or Cypriot food in Cyprus is calls to Newcastle. So that's where I started drawing on my travels, on my, my childhood roots, etc, etc. And that's what evolved my cuisine today. Within the first three years, I had experienced a lot of my guests that have lived in Cyprus and walk into a supermarket and see things like Kolokasi or things like uh, Bamyes or uh, Sujuko or rows and rows of preserved fruit etc and not really know what to do with them. I mean, you go through the vegetable uh, a section of a supermarket, you're going to get artichokes, you're going to have 45 different kinds of horta etc. Um, and so what had happened at some stage is that I said to a couple of friends by then, listen, why don't we get together at the restaurant, tell me what you'd like to learn how to cook, and I'll show you how, a couple of dishes. And that evolved into my cookery workshop that today is an intrinsic part of my, of my business, but also an intrinsic part of my connection with people with food, because it's a one-on-one -on -one where you spend four and five hours eating, drinking, cooking together and communicating, which in the restaurant, as you know, you flip from one table to the next and yes, you do have an amazing time, but this gives you a lot of bonding time. Um, so as a result, I started formulating recipes for that. I decided, you know what, that seeing as I share them in the workshops, I'd love to share the recipes that I make in the restaurant. This particular book, however, is a piece of my soul. It's three books in one. Um, number one, it's my philosophy on life as well as my philosophy on food. Okay, so yes, absolutely, I'm opening up there. Um, sharing of the recipes, as I've explained, I love the fact that I share them. They become immortalized because they're now on paper. And um, as a man without children, with these are my babies. And this is part of the legacy that I will leave behind. If anybody had said to me, listen, I would reach international acclaim and acknowledgement from a little 50-seater restaurant in a side street in Lemesso, there's no way I would have believed them. So when, when a year ago we were hit with this bizarrity uh, and the surreal experience that we were all living at the moment, my big decision was 
to, to close this gem, um, which was my universe, basically. It was my social life, it was, it was everything. Um, and what I decided was that I couldn't take that experience and put it in a box and put it into a scooter and deliver it to somebody's house. I could take the food, which would have been exactly the same product, but the other elements which made the dining experience uh, would have been missing. And I decided that any artist, it's something that I live by, to be honest, uh, that bows out on a high uh, is to be respected. And that's why I decided to, to make that decision, which was one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make. What has been the most defining moment in your life? I am the product, and I think we all are the product of our life experience and our circumstances. Um, so I would say pivotal uh, experiences going back would be losing my father at the age of 15, which was a pivotal experience from the point of view that I, I became the man of the house at such a young age. Um, so that was big. Uh, I would say that moving to Cyprus would be another life-altering experience. Anybody that's moved countries will know that it's, it's, it's a shift on every possible level. I had the privilege a few years ago of being invited to speak at TEDx, to be asked to be on an international platform and being told influence people with your life story uh, was a massive compliment. Having grown up uh, in a society both uh, as a child and here uh, where homosexuality was taboo uh, and at, to a certain degree still is, I, I think coming out as a gay man uh, was huge in my life because it was something that you had, to, it was a part of your, your life that you had to hide. Uh, and, uh, incredible circumstances and that means that you hide the essence of who you are uh, and you live a lie. So I believe that that was also a, a very very big life-altering experience where I could admit to myself who I am and also say listen guys if you don't like who I am then please feel very very welcome to, to, to not be part of my life. However uh, I have to say on this point is that I'm a thousand things before I'm a gay man, okay, and I hate being defined just by that. And, uh, but it is something that I feel is part of the whole of who I am and, and uh, I respect how people have respected me because it depends on how one purports oneself. It doesn't matter your, your, your race, your sexuality, your age, your ethnicity, whatever. It's how you present yourself as a human being in this life. This project over here is my latest big, big, exciting new chapter. My view is all about is the fact that I can do what I do best on a smaller scale and being part of people's special occasions is what I want to be part of, which I've always been part of. People have had everything from wedding proposals to anniversaries to whatever you can think of in my, in my restaurants within those walls and it's been our privilege to have uh, been able to be part of that and facilitated that. So, however, since I've started uh, letting people know about this, people have intrinsically, automatically understood that it's a special occasion kind of place. I grew up in the church and I adore the tradition of it. My chapel that I have in my own home, uh, which is one of the most special places uh, in the world for me because of the fact that the icons were painted for me by my mother. If you had to say to me, what is your most prized earthly possession, it would have to be that. Khalil Gibran said that if you bake bread with a bitter heart, you will bake a bitter bread. The second I feel that I'm not giving that 100% and that I'm not wanting to be doing what I'm doing anymore, I will firstly see it in the face of my, of my guests, but I would like to hang up my apron on a high. 
Now, whether that's in a year or two years or five years uh, time, I don't think I could put a timeline on it. But I think it will be a, I will, I will know it here. And then, of course, it will just be a new chapter. It will be the apron that will be hung up, but uh, who knows.